audio, audio, by N6TLU of the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. Hey, welcome to D-Lab, everybody. Today, we're going to do a quick check on a Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. The complaint is, when they flip on the plate voltage and apply high voltage, the radio sounds like it wants to jump off the bench at you. There's a horrible rumble, there's some smoke, and it also damaged a resistor on one of the 807 modulator tubes. So I think it could be the modulation transformer. Also, during this video, we're going to test the response of my newest little lapel mic that I'm running on my Rode wireless mic system. I'm still working on perfecting the audio for you guys. All right, let's get to the Viking. All right, we're back on the camcorder's microphone since I got to move around here. It's a little bit difficult with cords hanging off of me. So the Viking 2 came in here missing the top lid, but the owner has it, so no big deal. But the first thing I noticed, if you look down here, you'll see that the rectifier tubes are gone and they've been replaced by these solid state rectifiers. Bad move, okay? The 5R4s have a voltage drop and this transmitter was designed around those rectifier tubes. If you solid state it, your high voltage is going to increase. It can possibly damage the transmitter and I believe that's what may have happened here. So I have a set of 5R4s I'm going to install. I'm not going to worry too much about the 5V4 at this point. This 807 kind of sounds like a baby rattle. It could be shorted. I have to check that too. So rather than fire this thing up and see the lightning, let's give it an inspection and I bet you we can find the source without damaging this thing any further. All right, I've got the new 5R4 rectifier tubes installed for when we do the next power up, but I want to check this winding of the modulation transformer which feeds the plates of the 807s. Make sure this transformer is not smoked before I go underneath. And no, it's not. Okay, so right now we have continuity from this plate through the resistor down through the winding back up to the other 807. So that's a good sign. As I'm working on this and I'm moving this 807, I'm seeing some loose items inside of it. Things in there kind of wobbling around. So it's probably hurt. Anyway, so we're good topside. Let's flip it over and see what's going on underneath. Right, here we are, bottom side of the Viking 2. First thing that caught my eye is this little RF choke feeding the VFO power socket. She's got a crack. Looks like it's been pretty hot, so I'm going to need to verify that before hooking up the VFO. But the thing that immediately caught my eye, remember we were talking about that modulation transformer, Take a look at this terminal strip that feeds the modulation transformer and there's a big old arc weld mark right there. The Finalic is baked. So this could have just been contamination or it could have been the increased high voltage that caused it to arc and then it started welding itself. So I'm not going to flip this on until we change that terminal board and check the windings. So I've swung the interstage transformer out of the way. The original terminal board has five terminals but the one that I have to replace it with has six. So I'm going to use this original mounting screw and this one will have to move over a little bit. So we'll just end up with an additional terminal. No big deal. Well there's the new terminal board in place. The old one's floating. Just getting ready to move the leads down to it. But a few things I need to point out. The screws that came from the top that held the old terminal board were sheared. So I could not reuse them. And of course the modulation transformer is over those screws. So you cannot replace them easily. So I elected to use sheet metal screws. There used to be a ground look here. Okay. I'm going to take that ground now and swing it over to this point. That's for the preamp tubes. All right, let me get this wired up. All right, there's a new terminal board. It's wired up. Get this transformer mounted back up. 
We're ready to test. All right, I got the new transformer installed. There's the old baked terminal board. Ready to test. All right, the Viking is fired up. Filament lamp is out. But we got all kinds of grid. I'm on crystal control right now. Here we go. Moment of truth. There's my plate. So like my grid dropped a little bit. All right. A little over 100 watts out. Let's check modulation. Oh yeah. So the modulation transformer is not blasted. Turned out to just be the arcing on the terminal board. Good deal. All right, so this guy lucked out on the Viking 2 transmitter. I thought it was the modulation transformer. Turned out it was just that terminal board. I cannot say that it was caused from the increased high voltage of the solid state rectification. But if you want to do that to your Viking 2, you have to make sure to put a current limiting resistor in line to give a little bit of a cushion when the high voltage comes on, okay? I've read stories of guys smoking chokes and it also can damage the filter caps and propagate throughout the Viking 2 and cause a lot of damage. Tell you the truth, 5R4s aren't very expensive, like five to $10 a piece. I would stick with them. I'm sure the owner is watching this video. He's probably really happy that he didn't have to put out the money for a modulation transformer. That's what a good inspection can reveal and save you some money. Hope you liked the video. Johnson Viking 2 Audio. Audio. By N6TLU.